Macy grew up, even if temporarily, in a household surrounding by all-consuming love. A love that is forever. Macy's dad, from what is hinted throughout the book, never has another relationship with a woman because of his all-consuming love with a woman who, although no longer is alive, is still very much present. Macy sees pain in her father, which seems to be a direct correlation to her hesitancy to fully be consumed by Elliot in his love. In contrast, her relationship with Sean is anything but all-consuming. She found a man that understood her situation while also filling the void she feels must be filled. There is no longing for Sean, but instead the need to not be hurt by an all-consuming love that has the potential to crumble at her feet like her parents, or even with her previous relationship with Elliot 11 years ago. Being open to love means being vulnerable and opening up the gates to being hurt. Elliot was Macy's everything friend, her person, and seeing him again seems to open up that pain. Without Elliot, Macy was able to push down all the pain and suffering endured and find a way to cope with her life. Seeing Elliot brings back all those memories and nightmares. Personally, I love a past and present timeline that in the end mashes together to fulfill the holes in the story. A story like this feels like you're walking towards someone as well as away from something else, picking up the pace until you're sprinting to collide in the middle point while a storm is exploding all around you and you get drenched but you don't care because you can finally breathe. Macy is a broken child and Elliot is a broken man. Together they helped each other heal by being a shoulder to cry on and a person to listen to their pains. Words meant everything to Macy and Elliot individually. When they found each other, they shared a common interest in words. But more than that, they found the impact of what words can do when said in the right ways, surrounded by the right person. Macy didn't say she loved Elliot for over 11 years, but much more was said than just I love you. They had words, but their actions spoke louder than the words ever could. Macy's mother never left Macy. The list that she left gave Macy little strings to hold on to her mother in the small moments that a mother should be there. It feels to me that Elliot is an unwritten letter too, a string tying Macy to her mother. His actions reflect her mother's words. He's the everything friend that Macy needed. I think that Macy wanted to find a way to heal the broken parts in children in a way that she never could in herself. It seems like a reverse situation to her own. Macy's mother died, but Macy was the one that was broken. It's the children that are sick, but Macy seems to want to help them heal for the parents that she never had herself. She doesn't feel much love in her personal life, so she uses her job in a way to bring love to herself through other people. It breaks her, but it also holds her together. She lets herself be loved by Elliot, but she also lets herself be broken by a misunderstanding. Elliot's family gives her the family that she's always wanted. Her father seems to be lost without his wife. He does his best to care for his daughter, but it's just not the same without his wife. He wasn't supposed to have to do this alone, but he did. Elliot's family gives Macy the extra love she needs. Macy was living in a hazy fog for 11 years, surviving life. I feel like love cannot necessarily be described by words because it's more than just words. It's not a math equation that has a specific answer. It isn't comparable to anything else. It's overwhelming and all-consuming. It's scary to wake up and scary things that you feel are hard to put into words. There is much loss throughout this novel. Although probably considered to be a romance, this book holds more of a mellow tone. It's so much more than just love. Each character seems to react to loss in different ways. Macy's is not the best way, but is there a best way? She survived and she learned to cope and eventually she learned how to love and to be loved again. I think deep down she did think she was staying for Phoebe, but I think she was staying for the little girl inside herself who wanted what Sean and Phoebe had. It seems there was always a detachment of relationship between her and her father. Macy wanted what her parents had, but she seemed to be okay with settling, with watching what she wanted with her father through Sean and Phoebe's relationship. Sean and Elliot, Macy and Phoebe, Sean and Macy's dad, Elliot and his brothers, his parents versus hers, their library versus the one in Elliot's apartment. The list goes on forever. This book is like a million mini Venn diagrams. I think opening up meant exposing herself to the pain again, and to really accept what happened. It seemed easier to ignore and go on living hollow than to open up the wound and accept the idea of feeling pain again. I think she knew what had happened deep down, but thinking about that night again meant thinking about the day it all fell down. She wasn't ready for it. Elliot wants a life with Macy outside of the closet. He wants the real thing with her. He wants everything with her. The closet holds what once was. He wants their future together. I think you can't go backwards, but you can reminisce. I think sometimes you must reflect back, but not turn back. Elliot Macy needed to reflect back. 
They needed to recount the steps on how they ended up back in the closet 11 years later. Reflecting can heal and help to understand, while stepping back can lead to repeating the past, and life should always be evolving into new things, not old.